very warm welcome to our service for the 25th of October. Let's begin our worship with prayers led by Leslie Harry. Lord, we do not come as guests, but as members of your family. We do not come in fear, but with joy and thanksgiving. We do not come alone, but with all your people, of every age and in every place. Lord, we come as your family, for you are our Heavenly Father. And Christ is our brother, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. And we join together in our first hymn, Come, Now is the Time to Worship.
And now Robin Sherwood will lead us in some time with our younger members. Hi, you found me in the in my shed today. I'm just ready to do try to get on with some doing some good jobs. Uh, I've got a little helper with me today, and you may recognise this is Shirley. Uh, and I know Shirley. It's difficult for you to to talk now. I know the coronavirus is here, and you're taking precautions. That's great, but I don't think it's going to be a major issue for you. But there we are. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll see how it goes. So I've uh, I'm gonna. The only problem is, I've got a pretty. Pro what do you say? The battery's low. I need to sort out the battery. Then it's no good me trying to do this job unless I'm ready to do it. What? It's a little bit like God. How's it? A bit like God. That we got to have our batteries ready to do God's work. That's quite correct. Well, I'm going to need to change the battery, won't I? So let's have a look. If I can do that. Okay, if I need to plug everything in and get connected. Yeah, I think that looks as though it's connected now. So what do you say? You're not sure? Well, the instructions. Yeah, get the instructions out. I've got the instructions here. The instructions will help me to do the right thing, won't it? Yeah. So I've done that. That's all ready. Yeah. Not too bad. What do you say, Shirley? It's a bit like the Bible. Oh, you mean because it tells us the right things to do? Yeah, that's true. It does tell us the right things to do and how to do it. And the connection. What? The connection we need to connect to God. That's very true as well, that without we cannot do the right things if we don't follow God, what God wants us to do. And we are filled with God. Yeah, like the battery. Let's have a look at the battery now. When we, when we come together with what God wants us to do, we're filled, what? With the Spirit of God, yes. With the Spirit of God. Wow. Well, with the Spirit of God, we can go and do some good jobs now. But you say you're a bit worried. Why are you a bit worried? Oh, oh, it's Aussie the Osprey. Don't forget he's a vegetarian. You haven't got any problems to, to worry about him. There well, that's the, Hey, we're just ready to do the right things. It's a bit like following Jesus. Knowing Jesus helps us to do the right things. And following what he says in his word, the word of God, will help us do the right things. And be charged, ready to do good work for God. There we are. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hilary Lawson and Cheryl Davis bring us our Bible readings for today, followed by a message from the Reverend Rosemary Davis. Our reading this morning is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. The reading is taken from the Good News Bible, reading Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40, The Great Commandment. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, a teacher of the law, tried to trap him with a question. Teacher, he asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. 
The second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. The whole law of Moses and the teachings of the prophets depend on these two commandments. Amen. When I was a minister in Bristol, I well remember visiting a primary school to take an assembly. The school secretary had phoned me to arrange the visit, so we hadn't actually met face to face before. So when I arrived, I introduced myself to her, at which point she suddenly said, you're not like I imagined a minister to be. <laughs> I didn't quite know how to take that remark, but then I thought perhaps she had a stereotype image of what a minister should be. A holier than thou person, perhaps. A bit of a Bible babsher, maybe. And she was quite surprised when an ordinary person showed up at the school and started talking to her about everyday things. Some people think that Christians are people who go around with a gloomy face and tell everyone how they should lead their lives. And some people think that the Christian faith is more concerned with what you can't do rather than with what you can. As I see it, the Christian faith is not about abiding by regulations, but developing a relationship with a loving God who then shapes our relationships with others. And these two things come together in the conversation which Jesus has with the Pharisee, a teacher of the law, who tries to trick him with the question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? The Old Testament actually records 613 different laws, so with so many to choose from, it might seem a valid question to ask. In his clever response, Jesus says that actually the command to love God, combined with the command to love your neighbour, encompasses all the other Old Testament laws. In a way, the Pharisees thought of the laws as many different bricks, each separate and largely unrelated, but with two bricks larger than the others. Jesus, however, had a very different viewpoint. The two great commandments were like the mortar which made the other bricks form a wall. Without mortar, the bricks were a useless pile of building materials. The two great commandments set the standard by which all the other laws were to be fulfilled. For it is love which lies at the heart of everything. It is love which unlocks the door to our relationship with God and with each other. In the passage from 1 John, we read that no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made perfect in us. The same reading goes on to say that if anyone says, I love God and hates their brother or sister, they are a liar. For anyone who does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. I guess we learn to love first of all from our parents and then from family, from partners and spouses. We learn to love as we encounter other people. And to love others as God loves us takes all our hearts and mind and soul. We have to work at it because it doesn't always come naturally to love the person who always winds us up or the person who has really hurt our feelings. What Jesus says here about loving God and loving one another only makes sense when we set it within Matthew's larger gospel picture of Jesus dying for the sins of the world and rising again with the message of new life. That's when these commandments begin to come into their own, when they're seen not as orders to be obeyed in our own strength, but as invitations and promises to a new way of life in which bit by bit hatred and pride can be left behind and love can become a reality. So let me finish with a practical challenge. Decide this week to love someone you find difficult and act on that decision. 
It might be a person in your family, a work colleague or a person who lives in your street. Decide to love them and pray for them each day in the coming week, asking God to help you to love them and behave towards them in a way that is loving. It's a difficult challenge, I know, but it is a reflection of the God we worship, whose son's death on a cross is the fullest picture of love that we have. As we give ourselves to God, may we find our lives being shaped by his love within us. May who we are and what we do and what we say become ways of expressing our love for others because love is all we need. Our next hymn is Abba Father. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need. 
in this time of uncertainty and worry, give strength and comfort to all who need it. Bring your peace to those who are fearful, your healing to those who are sick. Assure the isolated of your ever presence and love. Be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we sing our final hymn, A New Commandment. God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow from you, and the strength of God protect and bring you safely through this day. Amen.